Hey guys, this is my uh, 2012 Lexus GS um, in deep sea mica colour and it's uh, obviously being a 2012 it's the pre-facelift model um, and it's got the luxury package so not the F-Sport one of the things with Lexus is that you've got to pick either the luxury or the F-Sport and to me I think the, the luxury one gives you more features so I went for that um, so yeah being a um, a mid-sized sedan, it's a bit larger than the IS, smaller than the LS. Before we continue, there's a really important web app that you need to know about if you're into your cars. Via Aurelia lets you post photos which automatically tags your car parts into the photo. No more cumbersome and manual hashtagging. When people view your photo, they can click on the parts to find links to buy them, read reviews and see more photos of that part. You want some cardboard inspiration? Well, because photos are all tagged with parts, you can make very detailed searches for photos. Like for example, a second generation Lexus IS that's white with a black roof, black mirrors, VLAN headlights and a third generation bumper conversion. Boom. There's your cardboard inspiration. Google searches are too broad. Forums and Facebook take ages to search and Instagram can only search one hashtag at a time. You can search for all sorts of complex combos, even world sizes, styles, colors, brands, you name it. And you can add any aftermarket part to the site. Every car has its own wiki built by the community with so much information about DIY stuff, maintenance, common problems, mods, features, literally everything in a standardized format which is way more efficient than information spread across a whole bunch of forums. This is the new car community app that you need to sign up on. Sign up today at ViaAurelia.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay updated. So with the trunk, there's a button underneath here. You can press and it's a powered, powered trunk. You can also do it from your key fob as well. It's a pretty large trunk actually. You can fit quite a lot in here. And then to close it, you just tap on this button here. Now, this is only on the luxury packages. The base model and the F Sport ones, as far as I can see, even the GSF, I don't think they get a powered trunk. So again, another feature which is a it's a shame you can't get the F Sport and get things like this. Um, so yeah, now with unlocking the car, obviously you've got your key fob, but all four doors have um, touch to lock, and you can just unlock it by pulling here. And all four doors do that. So once you're in the car, again, you just put your foot on the brake, like most cars these days, and then just tap the start and stop engine. And there's a lot that happens, actually, when you turn the engine on, which is quite cool. So as you saw, I've got a thing called um, Driver's Easy Access, which basically stows the steering wheel away when the engine's turned off and pulls it out when the engine's turned on. And also, uh, the wing mirrors... Um, fold and unfold. Now um, there's a setting which you can set where you can get them to fold and unfold when you lock and unlock the car but I have it set to when the engine turns on and off. I just prefer it that way. And the last thing is that the the seat moves forward and back and there's a whole lot of seat controls which I'll show you now which also move around when the car is turned on and off. Okay so in the driver's seat you've got and in the front passenger seat You've got a lot of controls here, and again, this is part of the luxury package. So, first of all, you've got your main, you know, forward and back. You've got your tilt. Um, this is an 18-way seat adjustment. I think the F-Sport or lower trims come in a 16-way, and then the base model is a 10-way only. So it's quite a big difference. And a lot of new cars these days, even though they're higher spec and all that, they only have 10 or 12-way, but this is pretty cool coming with 18 way. So what do you get? Well, first of all, you've got, I mentioned, yep, forward and back. You've got tilt with the front part. You've got the whole seat going up and down. You've got your back and forward, obviously. And then over here, you've got your thigh extension support. And on the passenger seat, this goes really, really far out. It's really cool. It kind of stretches out quite a bit. Um, you've got, um, this here is your uh, side bolstering. And I mentioned to you earlier, when you turn the engine on and off, it moves all these things to, get, to let you get in and out of the car more easily. Uh, what else you got? You've got your upper back support. You've got um, lumbar support. You can't see it, but it's this middle part here. And then the last one is pelvic support, which is the very bottom part. So there's just so much um, 
seat controls that you've got to give you a lot of comfort. Over here, you've also got these controls, and this is part of the 18-way seat controls. If you um, get the base package, or I think the F-Sport, you don't get these controls here. And so this allows the front passenger or the rear passengers to move the seat forward and back or to tilt it as well, which is just such a handy feature when you've got people in the back that just want to move their seat around and all that as well. And then lastly on here in the door panel as well, um, obviously you've got memory seats which you get now. I think the luxury package gives you memory seats on both the passenger and the driver, but the other um, versions only give you... Um, only driver memory uh, seat positions as well. And of course, like most Lexus cars, the memory seat remembers everything, all these controls, the steering wheel, the mirrors, the whole thing is part of that. Um, so yeah. So inside here, there's a lot of features. And this is obviously a pre of model. And in the interior, there's not a lot of changes in the, um, in the features, in the facelift, um, in, in newer versions of the GS. The only difference is really is the infotainment software is slightly improved and there's also a back button on here. Um, your gauge cluster has got a full, uh, you know, much higher resolution screen which you can do a lot more with, you know, changing the music controls and all that. This screen's quite funny because it's actually really, really high resolution but it doesn't give you anything uh, amazing in there. It just gives you the real standard kind of stuff you get in the older Lexus cars. So it looks really nice. It's just unfortunately... It doesn't really do much other than show you, you know, temperature and, you know, you can't change the music and, uh, you know, do a lot more on, this, on, on the gauge cluster here. One thing that's really cool is that when you change your driving mode, so in sport mode and in sport plus, you can see you get the red um, sort of dimmed light there and it tells you you're in sport S plus or in just sport. Uh, now, when you're in normal mode or in eco mode, there's actually a blue light and you can't, oh, you can sort of faintly see it now. And the blue light, the way it works is that when you drive, um, well, you know, when you use less gas, basically, the blue light becomes brighter. And as you put your foot down, it, it dims down just to try and make it more, um, you know, to help, help you try and be more efficient in, in your driving. You've also got a HUD and you've got a few different modes. Um, you've got the, the mode where it shows your eco meter um, and... Uh, you've got your rev, your uh, tachometer there, which is quite handy for when you're in sport mode and all that. And then you've just got your, um, uh, what do you call it, your um, your speed. Um, it does give you navigation guidance as well through there. And the face of models have full color. It's a, it's a, it's a more detailed HUD. Um, things like tuning your radio on and off and all that, changing stations and all that, it, it tells you all of that through there, which is cool. So um, I'll try and give you a closer shot. There you go. So you've got that, and you can turn music on and off. So that's the HUD there. Uh, in the dashboard, it's a really nice um, soft material. Like pretty much everything in the cabin is soft touch. Now this is this is sort of semi soft touch. Like it's it's soft. It's not the cheap kind of hard plastic, but it's also not leather. This part here is leather, or at least some sort of fake leather, if not, um, with some really nice stitching. It's a really nice kind of um, open cabin, uh, really well designed, looks really nice, um, and obviously the nice clock that you get there. Um, in the facelift, these LCD screens became uh, a nicer, kind of higher res um, screen showing you the temperature. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Now in the entertainment, you've obviously got the old Lexus remote touch here, and you know, honestly, I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. Um, it is if it's the first time driving a car. It's not the most intuitive kind of thing to use. But to be honest, if you're owning one and you want to buy one, don't let it hold you back. Like, I find it absolutely fine. And in fact, if I'm driving and I'm busy driving, I find it's easier to have my hand... My hand's resting here usually, and I can easily just turn the temperature up and down. And it's actually less work to do to, to just glance to the left than it is for me to go and move my hands, you know, across here. So I actually don't mind that. Um, so you've got the main menu of the entertainment there. You've got your navigation. Um, info is just all your trip information. Um, you know, the normal stuff there. How efficient your car is going and, and your range, that kind of thing. Um, back to the menu again. Uh, we've got um, setup. So there's quite a bit that you can do in here. I won't go through everything, but um, you can even, like, set any image you want 
on the screen. Like you can put a USB stick in and you can put a picture of, I don't know, your, your family or your dog and cat or whatever, I don't know. But you can put whatever image you want on there. You've got these different um, loading screens as well, which look really, really cool. So there's three there, and they, they definitely just look really nice when the, when the car is first turned on. Um, and as you can see, like you've basically got two-thirds of the screen is your main thing that you're looking at. And on the right-hand side, you can look at other things as well. So while I'm on my settings screen, I can have the air conditioning controls there, uh, the music controls there. And I can just push anything from this side to the other side by selecting this icon there. And then now I've got all the full controls. Um, so while we're here, um, climate. So because this is a luxury uh, model, it does have three-zone climate. And I'll show you in the back. There's, there's more controls in the back seats as well. So I can go three-zone and um, obviously control the passenger temperature here, my temperature over here, and then the back seat temperature through here as well, which is really, really cool. Um, and uh, you can also change where the air is, is flowing through. So if, the, if my wife wants it flowing to her head and I want it flowing down to my feet or whatever, you've got a lot of um, options there to um, you know adjust it however you like. So that's the climate there. Um, Media, I don't know why radio and media are different, but anyway. So inside media, um, basically what you've got is, unfortunately no, no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but you've got your Bluetooth audio there. Um, now my phone is recording, so I can't play music off that. You've got USB, um, or you can plug your iPhone in. It's really nice. You can browse all your music through here, all the album art. One great thing which Lexus has done to this generation as opposed to the previous generations is that you can browse music when you're driving in the older ones you couldn't you had to like you know stop the car to browse different artists and obviously you've got cd and and um you know your fm and am radio and all that and one other thing as well is that this has got the mark levinson sound system which is really cool um it's a 17 speaker system 835 watts um speakers everywhere and um again um if you like your music, you'll, you'll really enjoy that. Um, what else is there? And then telephone. Obviously, the last part is telephone there. So you can um, connect your phone, make calls. That's really, you know, all the standard stuff. There's also a feature called S-Flow. And when it's activated, it only blows air from the air conditioning system to places where occupants are seated. So if you're driving by yourself, you're only going to get air blown to your seat. Um, coming down here we've also got um, now this is a, a Singapore model actually so being the Singapore model unfortunately you don't get heated seats now this this trim level would have heated seats if it wasn't a Singapore model it's only got cooled seats so again um, if you're buying this car in the States or you know, wherever else around the world you would have both heated and cooled seats here and they're, and they're pretty good um, so you just got those there um, Nice big cup holders there, which is great, and you can remove the center part out if you, you know, want to store something else there. Um, you've got your gear selector and all that good stuff. Here's your drive mode selector. Um, again, like most Lexus, uh, Lexus cars, if I, you can see on the screen there when I change modes, it tells you you're in Sport, and when you put it in Sport Plus, um, you, you can't see it very clearly now, but actually it's telling you all about the shock, uh, the shocks there. It's quite funny, you know, it's telling you. It's trying to like teach you how a shock absorber works, the coil spring, the shaft. But anyway, it's just, it's just showing you obviously that the, um, the steering changes and the suspension becomes a bit firmer as well. So that's the difference between Sport and Sport Plus. I pretty much only use Sport. I don't use Sport Plus because I want it to be comfortable. Unless I'm you know driving somewhere where I really need the suspension to be firmer, I leave it a normal or Sport. Eco is pretty good actually. Eco is not that sluggish. You know, most cars that are in eco mode are really sluggish, but this car, thankfully, eco mode's actually not that bad, and I try and use it every now and then. Um, so, yeah, so that's that. Um, got your glove box in here, of course, um, which is nice and soft velvet lining there, or whatever this fabric is. And then at the top here, lighting. The lighting is really bright in this car. It's really nice. You've got a lot of controls up here. So, obviously, you've got your main dome lights. You've got reading lights for... Um, all four passengers you've got your um, sunroof and uh, which is nice one touch and it can be obviously open closed raised lowered the only thing is I wish that this panel could move by itself but you've got to manually move it which is not so cool so 
Uh, that's what you got there. So inside here in the glove box, first of all, you can move it back just a little bit, and that just gives you controls for your uh, power reared sunshade, which is pretty cool, and then your, your parking sensors as well. And if you put it further back, you've got that, and then you can pull it away up. It's quite large, actually, really good storage space. Here you've got your aux cable, your USB, and a power outlet, so lots of power options um, up here in the front. So in the back seats here, first of all, being a mid-size sedan, you've just got a lot of room, which is great. Lots of leg room. Um, the only problem, though, is that, that it is a bit sad that there's not as much headroom. Like, it's not awful, but I think for a mid-size sedan, uh, one of my friends who's quite tall, even he can't properly fit in the back. And a mid-size sedan should have that amount of headroom for people that are a bit taller. So, yeah. So in the back seats... Um, uh, first of all, there's um, the panels here are quite nice, and you've got storage here as well down the side. Uh, you've got a nice little thing, an ashtray that's not an ashtray, which is nicely lined with felt. All windows again are, um, what do you call it? All windows are fully automatic, and also all windows have um, soft close as well. So, as part of the um, luxury package, you also get the uh, rear sunshades as well. Um, which is quite cool, there's even a little one on this side as well here, so, you know, that's nice. Down in here as well, we've got um, some storage, which is nice. Um, you know, COVID times, you need your hand sanitizer and tissues because it's, you know, handy to have that. Um, now, if you do not have the luxury package, this is just blank. Um, but if you do have the luxury package, you've got some more seat controls here. So, first of all, you've got the power read sunshade, so I press this button here, you can look at the back. And you can see that brings that bad boy up, which is nice. And then if I look down here, um, first of all, you've got your third zone controls here. So you can control, see, temperature um, over there, where the, where the um, what do you call it, the air is coming out. So for your head, you've got the fans over here, and then you've got other fans underneath there for your feet. Um, Audio controls, you can also control the audio here, which is good, but bad if you've got kids who misbehave. But basically, you can just change, go through the different audio sources, a um, bit of gold FM there, or AM, uh, the breeze, and um, yeah. So anyway, you've got controls here as well. Now, again, being a Singapore model, this would normally have heated rear seats. That's part of this whole package. You get heated rear seats. The weird reason that I don't have them, is because again, it's in, it's a Singapore model, so uh, it's they don't need heated seats in Singapore. So that's that's one thing I'm missing out on here is just the heated seats down there. And lastly, you've got some cup holders in the front here, which is nice. And again, it's nice having cup holders here, but also you've got cup holders down on the side um, compartment on the door as well. And you've also got your individual um, reading lights over here. They're actually really really bright. Um, they obviously it's already bright now but when it's dark it's it's, it's very bright um, and also down the back here you've got one a power outlet which is really handy you can just slap in one of those um, dual USB chargers in here and then both your rear seat passengers can um, you know charge their personal devices and all that storage over here as well so yeah overall it's a nice cabin it's really comfortable um, I really like this color of the interior, but obviously it, just, it does mean you have to be more careful with um, getting marks on it. Now, usually marks are actually pretty easy to get out uh, to, to, to get rid of in this in this car. I've cleaned the seats, and they come out pretty easily. The marks. It's just obviously annoying if you just touch something. You know, if, if you're going to um, put some air in your tires and you have to open the valve stem cap, then you know you get back in here and you touch the side here, and then you know you've got a mark suddenly. So it's a bit annoying, but. To me, I just think that it looks so much nicer. And yeah, if you've got kids or, you know, you just want more practicality, then you might go for the darker leather option. Um, but really, really nice, the, the accenting, the details, the, all the um, stitching there. One thing I didn't know about until I bought this car is actually there's LED lighting that comes in underneath here. And it's very dim, but you notice it obviously at night time. You don't notice it here now. And it just adds so much more to this car. In fact, I would say at night time, this car looks just cooler in the inside. It's just, everything lights up really nicely, really well. All the colors are more obvious. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I really like this car at night time. 
so anyway that's that's it i'll be making more videos i guess on things i plan to do with the car the first thing i hope to do is get the front bumper um, converted to the newer um, larger um, grille to make the front end look a bit more modern um, and then things like you know the old trunk lip um, uh, yeah, a trunk lip and maybe putting in um, a head unit like Grom in the front just to give me Apple CarPlay. Um, so um, stay posted and uh, yeah, follow the channel. Yeah, sweet.